name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Grandma! Oh, I love you too, Glamour Girls. Hi everyone, welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday Glamas. Thank you for watching that commercial at the beginning of this video. I appreciate it. Hey, guess what? Today we are going to be making a much requested tutorial by y'all. You've been asking and asking for me to make a mittens tutorial. So yay, we're finally going to do that. Um, the last um, tutorial that I made was that scarf one. And I had told y'all that I was going to also be making a mittens tutorial and a hat tutorial. So on my way to Washington, I um, was kind of working up a pattern or design in my head as to the simplest way to make mittens. So I think I have it. I think I have the pattern worked up in my head. I haven't tested it out yet. So I'm going to do something that I've only done one other time. When I did the Mary Jane slippers, I'm going to be making the um, mittens on the fly as I film it. So hopefully it works out because usually what I tend to do is I use, if I'm making socks or slippers, I usually make one first for one foot or hand and then I'll make the other one. But this time I'm just going to do it um, I'm going to do the test one right on camera with y'all because if I wait to make the first one and then the second one on film, I probably won't get it uploaded for a week or two. So I thought, you know what, I know that they've been waiting and waiting, so I am going to just make up the pattern um, in my head and then when I've got it worked up, I'm just going to film it right then and there as I make my very first one. So yay, I hope it turns out. <laughs> for all you mitten wearers. I've never been much of a mitten wearer just because I feel like I can't, I don't know, I like the freeness of my fingers being able to move. So I usually wear gloves instead of mittens, but I know that y'all have been requesting them. So the yarn that I'm going to be using is Red Heart Super Satan. No, actually it's Red Heart with Love. I love Red Heart with Love because it's so soft. So since it's going on our hands, I wanted it to be really soft. I'm not sure of the name of the yarn color just because I already took the label off and I think I threw it away when I moved down here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to be using that color. And so this is what I have drawn up so far um, for my mittens. So yeah, we're going to be starting from the top and working our way down. Okay, so I think this is going to be a super, super easy um, tutorial. And that's usually the way I like it. That's why it takes me a while to work up patterns or designs in my head because I'm always trying to think of the easiest way to make that design to where a beginner, like let's say that you're a beginner and you just now clicked on my channel, you've never heard of me, you've never watched any of my tutorials, and you just happen to type in mittens, easy mittens, and you came up with my um channel i want you you know who that is that's joanne's letting me know that there's a sale <laughs> um so anyway if you're new to my channel and you happen to click on it i want you to be able to make whatever it is you clicked on with your very first lesson so i usually try to make all of my designs and patterns as simply as possible so that everyone can make it no matter how old or how young you are <laughs> or how much of a seasoned crocheter that you are so yeah i finally think i worked up a super 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 easy mittens pattern and then after my mittens tutorial remember i promised y'all a hat tutorial and this has been a much requested hat by many of y'all. Um, yeah, isn't she pretty? She's so pretty. I love my mannequins. So yeah, this is the hat that I'll be making next after the mittens tutorial. So now you'll have a, um, you'll have a scarf tutorial. You'll have a mittens tutorial. And soon you'll have a hat tutorial. Yay! 
So if you haven't subscribed already, go and subscribe so that you can get notified when I make that tutorial, that hat tutorial, okay? All right, so yeah, that used to be on my Etsy shop. Since then, I've closed my Etsy shop because y'all are keeping me busy. <laughs> yeah, YouTube's kind of become a full-time job now, so I'm going to devote all of my time to you guys, making tutorials for you guys, and uh, yeah, I'm, I just, I don't have time for my Etsy shop anymore. It was fun. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved talking to everyone on there. I made a lot of friends on Etsy, but I just don't have time for that shop anymore, so... Yeah, I'm going to be closing that down. Alrighty guys, so I will let you know what you'll be needing for this um, video. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm excited. I hope it works out. <laughs> so be patient with me because I'm going to be making this, like I said, on the fly as I'm filming it. Who knows? It might change as I'm filming even because that's just the way things go. <laughs> especially if you haven't tested out the uh, pattern yet so I'm gonna test it out with y'all y'all are gonna test it out with me okay and I can't wait to see pictures of your mittens after um, y'all make them hey um, the last video that I made was me letting you know that my Facebook crochet group um, that I wasn't able to get in it and I'm still not able to get into that crochet group of mine um, so it hasn't been resolved Facebook hasn't contacted me back to help me resolve that issue. So more than likely, I am going to have to make another crochet group. And I think I'm going to do that here in the next few days. And um, so I hope that all 46,000 of y'all um, find me in there and join. Because I would love to get to know y'all on a more personal level. Not just me talking to y'all on camera, but us communicating back and forth through comment responses or through chatting on there that would be so much fun um so yeah i hope that all of y'all go and join me when i finally let you know the name of it um ah, it really does um it hurts my heart that i'm not able to get into my old one because i work so hard to get those 2600 loving members in there that i did i mean it was such a great group i mean everyone was so loving and kind and it, was, it felt like a family more than a, an online group it just felt like an online family so uh, I hate to start over again but I know my next group will be just as loving and caring as that group <laughs> and this next group is going to be an all crafts group because I have so many interests not just crochet but I love to knit I love to sew um, just um, a lot of y'all are doing graph gans and I want to learn how to do graph gans so as I do I'm going to post on there about that too so yeah I have so many interests and there's things that I want to learn like needlepoint and so it's going to be pretty much an all crafts group page um, all right guys so let's get started with this mittens tutorial that y'all have been dying for me to make <laughs> so yeah I hope it turns out and if so um, find my link down below that is for my Google Plus community page and go and join. I love pictures. <laughs> Not only am I a crochet teacher, but I used to be a wedding slash portrait photographer and a nail technician. So yeah, any pictures that you guys have of the projects that I'm showing y'all, I would love to see them on there. My Facebook crochet group is of any projects that you've made from any tutorials from any books or whatever but that community page is just for my youtube tutorial projects that you've made okay so i would love to see them alrighty guys stay tuned and i will let you know what we will be needing for this tutorial so this is what you'll be needing yarn a pair of scissors, a crochet hook, and a stitch marker. Okay, let's get started. Look what I found on my table. A ladybug. Isn't she just adorable? Oh, she's so cute. You can see her face even. Oh, how cute is that? <laughs> okay, let's put you over here, little Miss Lady. Right there you can watch me crochet okay you can be one of my crochet lady friends <laughs> all right so let's get started 
Okay, so to get started, I am going to start with a magic ring, okay? So wrap this around your finger, grab the yarn like this, and then we are going to chain three. There's one, two, and three. And if you're not familiar with magic rings, then I have a lesson um, in my channel that'll teach you a little slower how to make the magic ring. Okay, so there is our chain three, and now we are going to make 12 half double crochets into the ring, okay? We're not gonna count that as one of our double crochets, okay? That is just going to be used, that is just going to be used as, um, the height for our stitches okay sorry guys that was my phone letting me know it's doggy potty time <laughs> okay so like i was saying that chain three is not going to count as our first um double crochet like it does normally um the reason i'm not going to count that is because i'm going to make 12 half double crochets and then when i join this last double crochet i'm going to join it with the first double crochet and that chain three is going to act as a filler so that there's not a gap like there normally is when you um um what do you call it when you slip stitch your double crochet into the top of the chain three there's usually a little gap there well to avoid that i'm going to make my last double crochet and then i'm going to slip stitch it to the very first one and that's going to act as a filler okay so to make a double crochet yarn over Make sure you grab, make, make sure that this um, tail is intertwined like that. Go into your loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, and go through two. Okay, so there's one double crochet, two, three, And you're going to continue that till you have 12 double crochets. So you're going to have 12 double crochets plus a chain. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to pull that tail and close that little hole there in the center so that your finger doesn't come out through it. See, that's nice and tight. And later on, we're going to um, weave that tail in, okay, so that it doesn't keep opening up on us. <clears throat> Okay, so now what we're going to do, since we have our 12 double crochets, we're going to skip that chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to go into the very first double crochet that we made, and we're going to slip stitch into that, okay? Alrighty, now we're going to chain up three so we can get the height of our double crochet, and we're not going to slip stitch into that when we come around. That's going to be our filler again. So we're going to make another double crochet right back into that same space. Okay, so that's going to be our first double crochet. And now you can get your stitch marker if you want, if you think that might confuse you. And you can put it at that very first double crochet that you just made, okay? That way you'll remember not to go into the third chain up, but you're going to go into the um, first double crochet stitch instead. Okay, so now we've got our one double crochet in there, but now this is going to be our increase row. So we're going to put a second one in there, okay? Alrighty. Alright, so we're going to do that now. We're going to put two double crochets into each of the 12 stitches that we made in our previous row. Whoops, I just put one, didn't I? I didn't put two. Okay, there's my second one. And we're going to do that all the way around till we get back to this end and we should have 24 double crochets plus that chain three, okay? Look, my ladybug is moving. She was over here, now she's over here. <laughs> okay, so I've got two more stitches, to, two more double crochets to make into that last double crochet from the previous row. There's one, and there's two. 
Okay, and now we are going to slip stitch into the spot where we made or where we put our stitch marker. We're going to ignore that chain three like we did in our previous row. Normally we would slip stitch into there, but I don't want there to be any gap. So I'm going to use that as a filler and I'm going to slip stitch into the stitch where the stitch marker is. Okay, and then I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three. I'm going to make a double crochet right back into there. Okay. And now I'm going to take my stitch marker out. Okay, and I'm going to place it right back up here so that I can remember. After a while, you don't have to put your stitch marker if you think you'll remember not to uh, slip stitch into that chain three. If you want to slip stitch into the chain three, that's fine. It's just that you'll end up with a little gap. You see how there is no gap whatsoever. You can't even tell where, where I slip stitched. It's because of that little trick that we're doing right there. And you can do that with anything that you're working in the round with. A lot of patterns tell you to um, chain up three and then make 11 double crochets because they're counting that as a double crochet. And then they tell you to slip stitch into it, but then you end up with a gap, a hole right there. And you can see all along where you slip stitched into. And so this is a nice little trick if you don't like having gaps especially for winter items. You don't want to be cold, do you? <laughs> okay, so now, so we put a double crochet right back into the space where we made our chain three, and now we are just going to put one double crochet into each of the remaining stitches, okay? So our increase row, for any of y'all that are new, our increase row just expands our work and it keeps it flat, but then when you start to put one stitch into every stitch, you're going to notice that it's going to start curving in and that's going to make the shape for our fingers. Okay, so just put one double crochet into each of the stitches and then meet me back at the end, okay? Alrighty, told you this was easy. Okay, so I'm almost finished and you see how it's curving upward? Um, we're going to turn it this way because we want that tail to be on the inside and I think I'm going to go and weave that in already here in a minute um, but let's go ahead and continue on with our one double crochet into every stitch okay and so you should have 24 double crochets plus that chain and now we are going to slip stitch where the stitch marker is chain up three and we're going to double crochet right back into there like we did in the previous row. Okay, so basically we're acting like that chain does not even exist, okay? Because we're not even using it. We're just using it as a spacer or a filler because look at how beautiful that looks. There's no spaces whatsoever. Okay, so you're going to just continue this way, making rows by just putting double crochets into each stitch one double crochet into every stitch and you're going to continue doing this until this work right here comes all the way down to right there okay so i don't know how many rows that's going to be for you i don't even know how many rows that's going to be for me because like i said i haven't made a test mitten yet this is my test mitten so when i come back i will let you know how many i made and um, your hand is probably bigger than mine or maybe it's smaller so it's going to determine um, your hand is going to determine how many rows you actually make okay so meet me back here when this fits all the way down to the fold of where your thumb is alrighty guys enjoy okay so I'm at the end of my ninth row one two three four five six seven eight and nine and I've tried it on and I've determined that this is where I'm going to stop and then start my thumb row so I made my last double crochet and now I'm gonna skip that chain and double crochet actually not double crochet slip stitch into the very first double crochet that I made and I'm going to chain three, two, and three. And let me show you what I'm talking about as to why I determined that I only need nine rows for my hand. 
Okay, so that's where it fits me. I left a little bit of room right there. I could have done one more row, but I didn't want my thumb to stick out so much this way sideways. I'm kind of hoping that by stopping right there, the thumb will kind of look, the mitten thumb will kind of look like that instead of weird like that. So I'm stopping at nine rows. When you get to the point in your hand where it looks like that, meet me back here because now I'm going to tell you what to do next for your thumb row. Okay, so you might end up going with 12 rows because you probably have bigger hands than me. Or if you're making it for someone smaller, you might be using a smaller hook and you might want to stop sooner. But or whoever you're making it for, stop when you've got about that much room for your thumb, okay? Okay, so now that you have the amount of rows that you need, and so when I left you last, we had changed three. So now that you've got however many rows you need, 10, 12, however, um, slip stitch into the first double crochet that you made, chain three, and now double crochet right back into the spot where you made your chain three. So that's one double crochet, two, three, and just keep making double crochets till you have 12 double crochets. So you're going to have one chain and 12 double crochets and then meet me back here. Okay, so there's my 11th double crochet. Here's my 12th one. And I'll show you why I'm stopping at 12. Okay, so here's where we started our row right there. So I'm going to make that our side seam, even though we did that little trick and you can't really tell where the seam is, I'm just going to put it there on the side just in case someone can tell. Okay, so I made 12 double crochets, and so this is about where we're ending up right there so that we give ourselves room for our thumb. Maybe you're going to need to go further, I don't know, but I'm just, like I said, this is for a size small adult, and so I'm just giving you the basic pattern of how to make a mitten, and you can determine um, how many you're going to need to go um, down until you get to your thumb area. Okay, so now that I'm at my thumb area, I determined that I think I'm going to make about seven chains now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so there's my first chain. I don't know why, but I think I'm going to put a stitch marker there at my first chain. Just because sometimes I tend to get confused where the chain starts, if it's there or there. So anyway, there's seven chains. And so you're going to have to determine how many chains it's going to take to go around your thumb. Okay, like that. So make as many chains as you think it's going to take. And then once you've determined that, so like I said, I made seven and now I am going to skip one double crochet. There's where we um, double crocheted into last and then we chained seven. I'm going to skip that neck. Whoops. I'm going to skip that next double crochet and double crochet into the next one. Okay, and make one more double crochet and then I'll try this on for you to show you what it's looking like on my finger. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And let me try it on for you. Boy, you're pretty vocal there, aren't you, Paris? Okay, so this is what we have right now. Okay, so we made 12 double crochets and then I chained seven and then I skipped a double crochet and then I double crocheted into the next stitch. Okay, so here's the double crochet that we um, we worked into that stitch and made a double crochet, chained seven, and then I skipped that one and then double crocheted into this one. And now we are just going to finish the row as normal with double crochets. Okay. So just keep going down the row and meet me back here um, when you get to the end of this row. Alrighty, see you in a minute. Okay, so here I am close to the end. I already did my last double crochet and now I'm going to skip the chain and slip stitch into 
the first double crochet of the row and I'm going to chain three double crochet right back into there and I'm going to double crochet all the way across okay including the chain I'm going to double crochet into each of the seven chains as well okay let me just do this row with you I might speed it up here in a minute just because it's pretty repetitive Okay, there's my last double crochet I just knocked my stitch marker out of there darn it <laughs> okay so there's my chain and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve double crochets and now here's my first chain and I'm going to double crochet into that first chain so there's one remember we made seven chains that's one chain two three and you see I'm going let me see if I can pull this out and show you because it can it can tend to get a little confusing it looks like that's worked already but it's not you see that strand and then you see that strand going through it I go into there and that's how I determine my next stitch and then I'm going to go into there okay so I did one two three four five and I hope I'm in the shot six and here's my seventh chain and now we are going to work the remaining um, double crochets so here's one just go all the way to the end of the row now okay and then meet me when you get to the end and we'll join together okay so this is what this is looking like I'll try it on when we get back okay so this is what it's looking like and I just counted my double crochet stitches and I have 30 I have 30 double crochets plus a chain okay so in the beginning we did the chain and then we did 12 double crochets and then we double crocheted into each of the seven and then I made 11 double crochets and now I am going to slip stitch and the reason why we only have 11 on this side is because remember there's that one that we skipped that would have made 12 but we skipped it for our thumb okay so you may you might have a different number just because you're probably making this a different size for your hand but if you're following my exact pattern then I have 30 double crochets right now I'm gonna skip the chain and slip stitch into that first double crochet chain three double crochet right back into there okay and now just go all the way around and meet me back here oh wait I said I was going to try it on for you so you could see what it is that we did here okay so this is my little invention here I think it's looking pretty snazzy what do you think this is a nice little um, comfortable size opening for our thumb and so now I told you to go all the way around and to meet me back here so we're almost done with our glove this is so quick all right guys I'll see you when you get to the end of the row okay so here I am close to the end of the row and like I said I'm doing this on the fly and so things may change and as I was off camera I just decided to do something um, and hopefully you're able to do it as well if you have one hook size smaller than this if you have a G hook a 4.25 millimeter I'm going to be using that here in a second but let's finish this row off skip the chain three go into the first double crochet of the row and slip stitch that closed 
and now I am going to right here I'm going to switch to a smaller hook and let me explain why first you may not need a smaller hook so let me explain why I'm gonna do it okay so here's my glove and so you see I left it at the same size hook that we've been using because this is the bigger part of our hand but now if you notice it starts to slim down so I want to do one row with a smaller hook to bring it in okay because as you see this is the wide part of our hand and now it's going to start slimming down so Paris you're making a lot of noise over there aren't you Paris no no leave the cat alone okay so that if we continued on with this size hook it would be really loose so rather than determine how many decreases to make I don't even want to think about that and I want this to be for complete beginners so instead of y'all having to learn decreases I'm just going to have you use a smaller hook okay so hopefully you have a size smaller than what you're using right now okay so I've got my G hook now and I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three, and hopefully this works out like I think it's going to in my head. In my head, it's looking good. <laughs> Let's see if it looks that way in person. Okay, now double crochet right back into the spot where you just chained three. And now we're basically going to do the exact same thing we've been doing, double crocheting all the way till we get to the end of the row. And you'll notice that the stitches will be a little bit tighter because we're using a smaller hook, but that's exactly what I want. You see how these stitches are a teeny bit smaller than these? These are looser, these are a little bit tighter, but that's what I want so that we can start um, doing this little smaller part of our hand. All right, meet me back here when you're at the end of the row. Okay, so here I am close to the end. One more double crochet to go. And now I'm going to slip stitch in the space where we've been slip stitching in. And now I'm going to chain three. And I'm going to do this for one more row, I believe. Let me see. Let me try it on. But do you see how that helped going down a size? You see how it's angling down? Just like our hand does. Our hand gets smaller right there and so is our glove yay okay so we you see I still want it a little bit smaller so I'm gonna make one more row with the G hook all right so if you need one more row go ahead and do that and I will meet you back here if you're good to go then just wait for me and I'll tell you what to do next Alrighty, so I'm going to double crochet right back into the place where I made my chain three and I'm going to double crochet into each stitch across the way till I get to the other end. Alrighty, see you in a minute. Okay, so here I am at the end of the row. Did my last double crochet. And now I'm going to slip. Whoops, I just grabbed one thread, didn't I? Okay, now I'm going to slip stitch it closed. And now I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three. And I decided while I was making this last row that I'm just going to finish off with this hook, the smaller hook, because I want the wrist area to be a little tight as well. So I think I will just continue on with this size hook. See how nice that is? Yeah. And we don't want them, we don't want glove um, mittens too loose. So this is perfect. Yay. I'm so happy that my uh, pattern is working out because like I said I hadn't tested it out this is my tester so we're gonna do the wrist now and then afterwards we're gonna do the thumb and we will be finished <laughs> okay now we're going to do something a little different here so all you beginners we're going to do something called front post back post if it intimidates you a little bit um, you don't have to continue on with us at this point go and find a a tutorial on my channel that is called front post back post okay there's one that does front post and one that does back post and if you want to go get familiar with that go ahead and do that first and then meet us back here 
Okay, so I will explain it a little bit as I go on right now, but if I'm not explaining it slow enough, like I said, go find those other videos on my channel and practice that and then come back and finish this off. Okay, so normally you would yarn over and for a back post you would go right behind this stitch okay see where the chain is coming from it's coming from on top of that double crochet so you would yarn over and you would go under this pull it up but I'm not going to do that yet what I'm going to do I'm going to try to open up my stitches so you can see what I'm talking about you see right here let me see if I can get close enough normally you pull up on this for a back post but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the stitch above it and pull on that okay for the first row and then for the other rows of front post back cup back post we're going to do it the way we're supposed to do it but like I said I'm always changing things up so I'm going to do it this way I'm going to yarn over I'm going to go right here where we normally would put our other double crochet what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there, but I'm going to go behind it and lift up on that. See? Right there. So we're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, and finish your double crochet as you normally do. Okay, so there's our front post. You see how it kind of, it's raised up compared to back there and back there? Okay, so now we're going to yarn over and I'm going to go from behind and push this back, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and now finish off my double crochet as normal. And I'm going to um, just do that back and forth, front post, back post, front post, back post. I guess you could you could call it front stitch back stitch because I'm not really lifting up on the post yet I'm gonna do that on the next row but this is just something that I wanted to try because this is I have a vision in my head and so this is what I'm doing here's the front one and now here's the back one see if I separate it you can see where I'm going in through see here's the uh, let me get out of this again you see these I can't keep it open and show you at the same time okay so you see now I think I got it you see how here's the actual post but I'm going in through here and through there okay you see that yarn right there going across that's what I'm lifting up on I'm not going through here yet I'm going through here and through here where those little strands are right there okay so what did I just do that was a front post now I'm doing a back post or I guess I could call it a back stitch <laughs> I don't even know if there is such a thing as back stitch I'm sure there is okay now I'm doing a front and then a back if you want to do the post you can for all of you seasoned crocheters if you think you'll like that look better then do that but I wasn't ready for it to start being raised ridges down here I wanted the raised ridges to be down a little further see what I'm talking about see if I had done the post the little raised ridges would have been way up here and to me that just is too soon so I wanted it down here okay so that's why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it just so you understand my what my mind is thinking <laughs> all right guys so go ahead and finish off now you're going to do a back stitch or post and then a front and meet me back here when you get to the beginning of the or to the end of the row all right have fun okay so here I am close to the end and I've got one more stitch to do but I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna skip it the reason is because if I was to do the back post the way I'm supposed to I'll do it for you so you can see what I'm talking about it's not gonna look uniform hold on see um, and then if I was to slip stitch where I'm supposed to it would look like I've got a front post and then two back posts and then a front post and I don't like how that looks now I knew that was gonna happen in the beginning um, 
but I decided to not explain it all until now because what I was what I have been doing as you know is when we chain up we put another double crochet right into that space where we chained up and then start at the front post back post but I didn't want to do that the reason is because it would have kept it the same um, it would have kept it the same size like this and I want it to start getting a little tighter because as you as you can see it's still a little loose on me so I opted to um, do it this way to just chain up and then do the front post and not put another double crochet into there just start with the front post back post and I knew at the end I was gonna skip this stitch um, to start making it even smaller okay to have one less stitch so what I'm going to do here instead of working this back post I'm not going to do it what I'm going to do is I am just gonna act like it's not there I'm gonna skip the chain three and go right into here and slip stitch it and you see it looks like we have our front post back post front post so that's what I am going to do and now I'm gonna chain up three okay and now I'm going to do front post back post but this time I truly am going to pick up the post I'm not going to go under the V right here sorry for that noise guys I'm in an RV and anytime anyone walks out there everything shakes okay so now I am going to go under the post not just under the top of the V up here okay alrighty because now I really want the ridges to show all right, so now we yarn over and now it'll be easy to determine front row, I mean front post, back post, because you'll see the ones that are raised up, that's your front post. The ones that are back there, that's your back post. Okay, so I yarned over and now I'm gonna lift the post, yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, finish off my double crochet as normal, yarn over, and now you see that that's scooted down to the back, so you know that's a back post okay and remember you're pushing back on the whole post not just the stitch under the V this time now a front post okay so there we go you see how it's starting to look like um, and it makes it stretchier when you do front post back post okay so now yarn over and go let me see if I can open this up so you can see what I'm doing Okay, yarn over and go under the post, not just under the stitch, but under the post. Yarn over, pick up that loop, yarn over, go through two. I hope I'm in the shot. Yarn over, go through two. Alrighty guys, just keep doing this. Follow this pattern all the way around till you get to the end of the row. When you get over here to the end of the row, you should finish off with the front post okay so here I am at the end of the row yarn over and my very last stitch of the row is a front post which is perfect because that was a back post so it makes it all look uniform front back front back front and so now we're gonna skip that chain three like we have been doing and we're going to go into that stitch right there and we're going to slip stitch it closed chain three one two and three and we're going to go right back into there and lift up with a um, front post okay so there we go so you see by doing that making the chain and then going right back into there it's keeping this uniform all the front posts there all the back posts here and so just continue that way the way we just started this we uh, um, slip stitched into there chain three and then went right back in there and did that just do that for the next row do it for as many rows as you want the thickness of your wristband to be okay I'm not sure how many I'm going to do let me see hmm. I might stop there I might do one more hmm actually I think I'll do this row and then one more okay but I'm not sure so I'll let you know when I get back how many I how many more I did after this one alrighty guys have fun and then after this we will get on with the thumb okay guys so here I am 
I think that's as wide as I'm going to make the wristband. Um, so I just did a back post. Now I have to do a front post. Okay. And now I have to close it up. Okay. I'm going to chain one and try it on. Let me see. How many rows did I make? Six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I did six. One just going under the V's and then five going under the whole post. Um, so that's the look that I like. And I'm so glad that I thought about switching to a smaller hook size because that is perfect. I love it. It's nice and tight. Not too tight, but yet it doesn't feel like it's going to fall off you when you flick your wrist or throw a snowball or something. <laughs> Not that I'll be throwing snowballs in Texas. <laughs> okay, so that's perfect. Um, now I'm not sure if I should do an edging like a single crochet. You know what? Let me try it. Let me try it and see how I like it. Like I said, this is my test mitten. So I don't even know what my finished product will look like. But let me try and see if I like what a single crochet would look like to give it more of a finishing look. Let me see. Hopefully it doesn't make it too tight. I think I'm going to like it. Yeah, what do you guys think? That's with the single crochet and this is without I don't know. I almost think I like it without. What should I do? Let me go a little further and see how I like it. Okay, so that's this side. That's with a single crochet edging and that's without. Let me see. With or without. You know what? I kind of like it without, but I do want it to feel more secure. So you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to do slip stitches instead. Let me see. See what that looks like. I told you guys. <laughs> this pattern might change. I only had the basics of it worked up in my head. I hadn't really gotten the pattern down all the way to the finishing details yet. Let me see what slip stitches would look like. I think the reason I'm thinking slip stitches is because um, it doesn't make it so... Yeah, I think I like that. Because I like how it looks finished like that but yet I want it more secure and not to stretch not to lose its shape so I think I'm gonna go with slip stitches all the way as a finishing edge oh, my husband's home went to go get us some Billy Bob burgers he got me a Swiss mushroom burger nummy num I say nummy num because my daughter, Finesse, when she was a baby, she used to call food nummy num. She would say nummy 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 num. Just like that, that fast. Nummy 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 num. <laughs> I thought it was cute. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. That's cute. So y'all can do it however you want, but I think I'm going to go with that, with the slip stitch edging. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that and then meet you back here and then we'll get started on the thumb. Okay, so here's my last yeah, slip stitch. And I'm going to chain one and get my scissors and leave myself a little bit of a tail so I can weave it in. And voila! And then I will weave that in. And that's what this part looks like. Woohoo! Alright, now I'm scared. I'm scared to do the thumb. This is my first mitten ever, guys, so I'm kind of freaked out a little bit. <laughs> I hope it turns out. 
Okay, so how am I going to start this? I'm going to go back to my H hook. And doo -doo -doo -doo. this one will be, I guess, you know what? And you know, the, the beauty of this mitten that I came up with is you do the exact same for this hand or for this hand because the seam will be on the outer part of the hand regardless of which one you do. So all you got to do is the exact same thing for both hands. Yay! Okay, so to get started for the thumb, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I think I'll go in through here, insert my new yarn, pull up a loop, and chain one. I'm going to go right back into there. Let me see. Should I make? Yeah. Chain one, chain two, chain three. I guess I will continue on with double crochets. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do double crochets or single crochets, but I'll continue on with the doubles. Um, but I think maybe on the tip of the thumb, I might do single crochets because in case we have long nails so that they won't go through the double crochet. So I think this part of the thumb I'll do in double crochets and then I'll do the tip in singles. Y'all can do it however you want though. Okay, so there's my chain and I'm going to go right back into there like we've been doing with a double crochet so that I can ignore that chain later on and when I close it this will be the filler. Okay. And so now remember we did the seven chains to go around our thumb. So now we're going to go in through these stitches. See, here's one little stitch, another little stitch, but instead of V's, it's just one little loop because we use the bottom part of the V for the double crochet and now there's only one loop left. So you're going to go into that top loop right there. Okay, yarn over and let's incorporate our tail as we, um, Here's the tail as we go in. Okay, so here's a double crochet. Okay, right there. So there's the chain, double crochet, double crochet. I think I'm going to make a decrease right here. And to make a decrease, yarn over, go into the loop, pull up a loop go into the next loop, pull up another loop, go through three, and then go through two. So you just turn two stitches into one. And now I'm going to make a regular double crochet into the next stitch. And now I'm going to make a decrease again. I think I'm done incorporating that tail after this stitch because it's confusing. Okay. So that was a decrease. Now we're going to do a normal double crochet. And now a decrease. Let's see where are we? So now here's so now we went all across the part that went around our thumb. Remember the seven chains? We just did that, and now we're on this part right here. Remember we did one, we did we were doing double crochets, and then we did the chain. Well, this is the double crochet part that we're doing, so it's kind of a long stitch. So what I'm going to do for that, I'm gonna go into here pick up a loop and now I'm going to make a decrease. Okay, and now I'm going to make a decrease right here too, just because I don't like that little gaping hole right there. Okay, so you see it kind of closed up that hole. Imagine if I hadn't have done that, how big that hole would have been. Okay. Now I'm just going to continue on with eight regular double crochet. 
And now I'm going to make a decrease for my last stitch here. Okay. And now here we are back at the chain. I'm going to ignore the chain like we've been doing. And I'm going to go into, let me see, where's the chain? One, two, three. So I'm going to close it with the uh, first double crochet that we made. Okay, now I'm going to chain three. And let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so there's that. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm going to make um, another double crochet into that space where I just made the chain three. Okay, and now I'm going to put one, one double crochet into each of the stitches. This is not going to be a decrease row. So I got two more stitches to go. One. And two, my husband's watching TV. Sorry guys, it's already evening time. We ate dinner and then I thought I would finish this. Okay, so there's the chain. And once again, we're going to use that as a filler. So we're not going to slip stitch one, two, three. We're going to go into the double crochet, the first double crochet that we made to close it off. Now let me see what it's looking like. What are we doing here? Hey, that's not too bad, huh? Okay, so let me try it on and see if I need to make that next row a decrease row. Okay, not looking bad at all. Looking pretty good. Okay, what should I do? Should I make that regular or a decrease? I think I might. Let me see. I think I might continue with just regular double crochets. So let me chain three. One, two, and three. Put another double crochet into the same space where you just changed three. Now. Hmm. Yeah, let me try. Let me see what it looks like with just one double crochet in each of the stitches. Maybe I'll change it. Maybe not. Okay, this is my last stitch and I'm anxious to try it on to see if I should have made decreases or not. Okay, there's the chain. I'm going to ignore that. Go into the first double crochet, slip stitch it, and let me try it on. Hmm, I think that might be okay actually, but I think I'm going to have to start making a bunch of decreases now to close off the thumb. Yes. Okay, so that came out nice. Okay, so now what I'll do is, I think I'm going to start single crochets here. So there's a chain one and I'm going to go right into there with a single crochet and then the next stitch I'm going to insert my hook, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop and I'm going to go through all three making that a decrease. Okay. And let me see. I think I'll do that again. I think I'm just going to make decreases from this point on. Okay. Insert my hook. Insert it again. And then go through all three. Insert my hook. Insert it again. Go through all three. Insert my hook. Insert my hook. Go through all three. And here's my beginning one. So I guess this one I'll just make a normal single crochet. And then I'll close that right there. Let's see what that's looking like. It's looking good. But I think I've got one more row to go. Actually, I just have to close it up. <laughs> Probably like 
two more decreases will probably close up that hole. Okay. So let's see what we've got. Okay, let's chain one. Insert our hook into that same space. Then insert it into the next one. Insert our hook into the next space. And into the next one. Go through all three. And I think this is the last decrease. Insert our hook. It gets so tight you can barely see what you're doing. Okay, I know there's one more there. I just gotta see if I can get in there. Come on, I know there's one. There we go. Okay, come on. I know you can get in there. Right. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure to close up all the holes. Okay. Pull it through. Go through there. Go through there. And then I'm going to make one chain. Okay, and I'm going to leave myself a tail and cut it. I'm gonna pull this through, snug that down, and I'm going to um, thread my needle. Okay, and see that little hole right there? I'm going to push my needle through to the inside of the glove because I'm going to turn that thumb inside out so that I can completely close it. See? There. Just pulled it through. Alrighty. So the hole is pretty much closed, but I just want to make doubly sure that it's completely closed, okay? Okay, so that pretty much does it. Now you can cut your tail. Put your thumb back the right way. And let's see what it looks like. Wow, that came out really cute. Uh oh, I snagged it. Oh wait, is that the tail? Oh, that's the tail that I left in there. That came out really nice. That's a nicely shaped thumb. Let's see what it looks like, though. <laughs> Proof is in the fit, isn't it? Yep. All right. I think I like it, guys. And my nail is not coming out at all because we secured that, didn't we? Woohoo! Yay! I hope you like these um, mittens. I sure do. Woohoo! <laughs> So this is pretty awesome. I'm pretty proud of myself, guys, because I was so intimidated to make um, mittens, but it came out really, really good. So I'm proud of it. Thank you so much for joining me here again at Made With Love by Glamour, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love. Okay, so if you haven't subscribed, subscribe so that you can get the next tutorial coming up which is going to be the hat tutorial okay all right you guys yay thank you for joining me and don't forget i love you Mwah. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching our Glamour's channel. channel.